Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone. Now, I'm formally um, welcoming you to all this session. I, Atharva Kuzkarani, I will be moderating today's session. I will request the audience to keep their microphones on mute unless you want to ask a question. Hi, sir. It is a uh, pleasure to connect with you virtually. Um, before we start this session, I would like to give a small introduction about this speaker. Pudi Ravikrishna is the director of design at Airway. He is a software product designer with over 15 years of experience in user experience design. He studies the domain, synthesizes customers' needs, benchmarks against the best, and recommends the product vision to drive user engagement and achieve business outcomes. He has worked with some of the senior leaders of technology and product around the globe and believes in nurturing the best talent and improving the process to create high impact of design teams. He possesses a good understanding of banking and financial services, marketing, retail, and healthcare verticals. We are glad to have you, sir. Over to you. Thank you so much. And uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. And uh, uh, thank you for joining me in this session. Uh, I'm very excited to be a part of this and uh, I really would have loved uh, to interact with you in your campus. Uh, maybe that will uh, save it for the future. Uh, for uh, today's session, uh, I would be talking about my experiences over the past six months uh, during the lockdown. It's more of a personal journey. Uh, it's nothing related to design per se, uh, but uh, this is something that I wanted to share it uh, uh, with uh, young people. Uh, so uh, this presentation is a tribal concern. So uh, what is it uh, that I have learned over the past uh, six months, right? So briefly introducing myself, uh, uh, I grew up in a small uh, town called Sunabeda in the southern part of Odisha. Uh, now this is a very remote area. Uh, where uh, there was a public sector undertaking called uh, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, uh, which manufactured MiG-21 engines. Uh, my father uh, was from Andhra Pradesh and uh, he moved there uh, for employment and he had stayed there for almost 40 years. And all of my schooling and education was uh, uh, done there uh, until my class 12. So uh, this was uh, an area which had dense forests, lush green fields all around, uh, plenty of water, and uh, uh, there was uh, uh, tribal communities, indigenous communities, which who inhabited the forests or the hills uh, surrounding our township. So it was a very pleasant childhood, uh, post which I did my engineering uh, between 95 to 99. Uh, then worked as a uh, software developer. And then for the past uh, 20 years, I have been working as a designer, right? But uh, this uh, one hour is not about my journey in design, uh, but rather it is a journey uh, which uh, are uh, 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 something 20 years uh, before 2000. So uh, when the lockdown was announced in March, uh, all of us were forced into our homes and not, not even allowed to go uh, outside. So I happened to visit my family in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, I stay in Bangalore and uh, I was almost trapped in that village. Uh, I just about managed to get a taxi and uh, drive back uh, to my sister's place in Rajamundry. Now, for the past uh, six or eight months, I have been here with her, uh, not uh, wanting to travel uh, during this time. Uh, but those uh, initial weeks were stressful, right? So uh, trying to handle uh, that uh, claustrophobia of sitting at home and uh, not having anything uh, to uh, do at all. Uh, so uh, I happened to be reminiscing uh, my childhood memories, uh, reading uh, Enid Blyton novels, uh, watching the famous five uh, adventures on uh, television, and then uh, reading comic books. 
so we had a very good uh, life i would say uh, i remember saturday afternoons were uh, more adventurous uh, as boys uh, taking our bicycles and venturing off uh, out on the outskirts of our township into the fields so uh, what was it like uh, so this is how it would look like so i borrowed photographs from the internet so you get an uh, idea of uh, what i'm talking about so as compared to a city uh, uh this is like uh, living in paradise uh like there were times when we would venture off closer to a uh, village on the uh, away from the road and uh, we would encounter some open fields with uh, a buffalo skull and we would try to imagine stories or create uh, uh, cook up stories uh, about some uh, thrill or adventure but uh, uh, the life in uh, township was uh, very pleasant so this is a road uh, which has the uh, jacaranda flowers blooming and you you can see the road is uh, all painted blue and uh, we would pick uh, uh, fruits directly from the trees and uh, uh, i have one uh, childhood memory was uh, uh, a tribal who would visit uh, our uh, township once a week sitting under this giant red tree and uh, he would wait there until someone purchases his uh, coal and then by evening he would not be seen so the drawing in the middle is uh, uh, something i drew from memory in my childhood uh, somehow i have managed to save it all these years so uh, uh, it is uh, the response of a child uh, uh, looking at his uh, personal experiences so uh, the covid was a time to again reflect right so i instinctively started to draw and uh, this was a story that i drew uh, from memory again uh, uh, my journey uh, away from the township to outside of uh, uh, india or uh, to other states for my uh, studies so i remember uh, the uh, green hills uh, the rain and uh, playing under the trees and uh, uh, this was the story of the tribals uh, their self sufficiency so uh, they make uh, a mahua drink uh, from the fruits of a certain uh, tree and then uh, they uh, ferment it and then uh, they make a drink of it which is shared with the rest of the folks so this was uh, something i just drew with watercolors uh, which are available in the nearby shop but uh, i started to wonder what happened to the tribals right so post 2000 uh my father retired in 2005 that was the last time i went to that place uh, post that i been living in cities so uh what i was wondering was uh, what happened to them uh, uh the tribals uh, did they fare better or, uh, or did they were they engulfed again by development or what really happened to them so i was trying to study more about them uh, specifically about uh, the tribes which who surrounded our township so i discovered that uh, odisha has the largest number of tribes in india about 62 tribes so i was surprised that the township that i lived in uh, had three to four tribes uh, on the periphery so uh, i was trying to understand uh, which was the tribe and uh, as i dug deeper i found a uh, lot more information than i could consume so one dominant thing is the uh, tribals are nature worshipers and all their gods are natural elements so you have the earth goddess you have the mountain the stream everything is a god and all of them are worshiped and taken care of so a typical uh, village uh, would have a sacred grove where all the sacred plants are uh, uh, planted and taken care of it sort of becomes uh, the temple so the nature or the forest uh, or the mini forest created there uh, is the place where they would go to for their uh, religious ceremonies and the, even uh, all, this is a practice which exists not just in odisha uh, across all tribal communities in kerala uh, tamil nadu uh, northeast uh, and uh, 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 across chatisgarh jharkhand uh, madhya pradesh so uh i as i understood uh, them better i realized that uh, they uh, existed uh, in harmony with nature right so they uh, uh, subsisted on the produce of the forest 
along with uh, uh, agriculture uh, by clearing up uh, small patches of land in the forest itself. So they were self-sufficient uh, by all means, uh, their water, their food, uh, their medicine, everything. So uh, I, uh, this is one instance where the siali leaves uh, are collected by these tribals and uh, then they stitch them up as leaf plates and sell it off to the uh, nearest town uh, from where most restaurants it is shipped across uh, India where restaurants uh, typically used to serve uh, food on these plates. So this is a very uh, eco-friendly uh, way of doing uh, business, I would say, uh, where uh, uh, the environment is never harmed. So this is another instance where uh, the tribals, whenever they need uh, um, anything for their own self, uh, which they can't have access to, that is something they get it in exchange. So more than uh, cash, uh, they would prefer something uh, in kind. So uh, like uh, making brooms and selling them or growing vegetables and selling them in the nearest market. So one, uh, uh, they also have their own crafts uh, and then uh, religious ceremonies. So one craft which uh, I found closest to the place where I grew up was called Dhan Murti, which is uh, Dhan means the paddy in Odia. And then uh, they use bamboo strips and threads to tie these uh, paddy uh, to the strip. And then uh, they uh, create uh, any op art object, right? So these objects are objects of worship. So their belief is that uh, uh, these are their gods. So uh, you would have uh, their own uh, tribal deities this is uh, another instance of the same so what uh, triggered uh, me was that uh, i had used uh, threads uh, three years back to do an art exploration so i said this looks like a continuum of that uh, in addition to the thread uh, now i have uh, the additional constraint that uh, i would not use any manufactured material i would just use a very eco-friendly material so i borrowed from uh, the tribals and uh, for the first time in 90 days I ventured out of the, my home to the market. Uh, I bought uh, the siali leaves, uh, the leaf plates and uh, broomsticks and cotton threads. And uh, uh, one thing which uh, dawned on me was that uh, for a tribal, uh, the leaf is a currency in itself. So you have uh, something like tendu leaves, just like the siali leaves is used for uh, uh, leaf plates. Uh, tendu leaf is used for making rolling beadies. So most of them would collect the tendu leaves during the season and uh, the money that they earn from that uh, sustains them for uh, the entire year uh, along with other means uh, like collecting produce from the forest, uh, growing their own vegetables and growing their own uh, uh, cereals. So uh, I borrowed from this and then I created I uh, cut uh, 100 siali leaves uh, to create a standard uh, bundle of an RBI uh, note. So I used uh, the size of a 500 rupee note. And uh, this is the uh, final thing that uh, emerged. So it's a tedious process of uh, uh, two days of just sitting and cutting leaves. And uh, uh, in terms of presentation, I uh, named it as uh, precious. Uh, my uh, intention was that uh, nature uh, uh, has to be guarded and it is uh, one of the most important uh, assets that uh, we should preserve and take care of. Uh, that was uh, my intention here. Uh, but having read through so many articles and so many uh, uh, news clippings and uh, so many videos, uh, when I went to sleep, uh, this is what uh, came in my dream. Uh, it is uh, cherry cheese pineapple. Uh, so it is a side dish usually served uh, with beverage uh, in a restaurant. So it could possibly be that I was missing Bangalore and its pubs. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, uh, I was uh, initially taken aback that uh, I wanted to create a very serious art. And this is what uh, came in my dream. Uh, but I uh, went ahead and said that maybe I should just uh, create it uh, just for the sake of uh, play. And, yeah. Okay. So I used uh, 
coconut broomstick to create the frames uh, tie them up can you hear me now okay sure thanks and uh, the sphere was uh, a bit of a challenge uh, because uh, i had to uh, uh, create a three dimensional structure i had to learn how to work with uh, the uh, coconut broomstick how much of it uh, uh, is easily bendable and which part of it uh, doesn't really bend and is very stiff and uh, i didn't have enough space either i'm staying with my sister then uh, in the balcony i just uh, 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 put this uh, uh, together and uh, the cle leaves i first stitch uh, them over the frame with thread and then the leaves are bound together using the grass uh, which the tribals use uh, which is called sabari grass i believe and then uh, the toothpick was uh, uh, nothing but the coconut stem uh, leaf of the stem so it was all uh, 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 produced that i got from the garden around me itself uh, so uh, then photographing it over the terrace and uh, cleaning it up so this uh, was an uh, initial uh, exploration so it is not uh, uh, tidy as such but uh, what uh, it enabled me is that uh, i always thought two dimensional uh, but uh, suddenly because of this exercise i am now thinking three dimensional so again uh, uh, there was another uh, childhood game uh, I, i believe most of us would have played this uh, uh, in in our uh, primary school uh, lemon and spoon uh, so uh this was a period when uh, you have plenty of time right so may june july you're not doing anything so i i said okay uh, if it has come then i'll just create it by now i had become very uh, uh adept at uh, uh bending the bamboo uh, sorry the coconut broom stick and the only thing was i had to wait for 5 days for that uh, coconut leaf to drop from the tree uh, i couldn't climb it up and uh, then once i had the structure in uh, place then i uh, wrapped the leaves uh, all around and uh, so this is a patient exercise uh, it is a, also a meditative uh, exercise i would say and uh, the scale you can judge uh, from uh, the bottom photographs so it was a, a, i mean uh, i was starting to enjoy this now uh, where i'm not trying to make very a uh, deep uh, thinking or trying to make very dramatic statements but something which is superlative and easy and uh, also uh, fun to do so this is uh, how it transpired now uh, as i understood more uh, i enrolled into a course in uh, uh, indira gandhi national center of arts for 3 months uh it was around folklore and intangible cultural heritage uh the, uh, the drive for that was uh, i was trying to get deeper understanding and saying that what is the field which would help me get a more in depth understanding right how it's it's partly anthropological and it's also partly cultural uh, understanding so uh the i understood the tribal society uh, equates uh, women to be equal with men uh they have a uh, uh, very high independence they can choose their own uh, uh, partner and at any point if they are unhappy they can leave the partner so they are very uh, independent women uh, so one uh, ornament which caught my eye was the one uh, anklet uh, that they wear uh, on their feet and uh, in growing up in the 80s uh, i did see this anklet as a common occurrence even in village uh, uh, folks in andhra pradesh as well so i wanted to create this anklet and instinctively i created the frame i didn't imagine it to be so huge and once the frame was ready uh, i uh, had struggled a bit uh, to keep it stable and then the daunting task of having to cover up the entire thing with uh, one leaf at a time so uh in between i wanted to see if i can make decorative patterns around it 
uh, by folding just the leaves. Uh, but uh, after a while, I felt that uh, uh, it was taking away from the subject and uh, I want it to be more abstract. So I left it that way. And uh, each time I tried to take a photograph, it appeared very different in each angle. So it is just a single one, but going around it, I started to see different shapes. And uh, when I showed it to a lot of people, uh, each one had their own interpretation. And uh, that's when I started to enjoy it. Uh, uh, and I thought uh, this, uh, 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 a specific uh, one, uh, I call it as uh, Vanaja Sanklet. So Vanaja is uh, the forest or uh, is the daughter of uh, the forest. Uh, and this, I intend it to be uh, the tribal women. But, but uh, if you study the history, uh, you would understand that uh, tribals have always been exploited, uh, first by the kings, subsequently by the British and the post-independent India also, probably the feudal uh, landlords uh, continue to exist. And even the state, uh, when it went about building its modern temples like the dams and factories, uh, it caused a lot of displacement for the tribals. Uh, even the township that I grew up in, uh, I remember reading an article that uh, the people who were there uh, before the township was built, had to be displaced and uh, uh, pushed to the periphery of the, of the township. So Gopinath Mohanty, uh, this was the first person who drew, uh, who wrote a novel about uh, the plight of the tribals. Uh, it depicts the story of a tribal who is exploited by the uh, landlord and uh, the police uh, uh, also uh, don't help him. So. Uh, I think this literature uh, is about uh, 120 years old now, and uh, you would discover there are uh, movies uh, made by in the 70s as well. Uh, one movie is Akrosh, uh, starring Nasiruddin Shah and uh, Om Puri. So uh, if you find time, you should uh, look at it. Uh, it's a very good movie, which uh, 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 focuses on the plight of the tribals. Now, uh, when I kept reading more and more, I was uh, uh, I heard about Naxalism in the area where I grew up. So until 2005, uh, when I last visited the place, uh, no one ever heard of any violence. But now suddenly we heard uh, uh, that Maoists uh, roamed the area and uh, uh, the tribals are caught in a conflict between the police and the Maoists. So, uh, they, they may not be participants to it, but they can be framed by the security forces. And things get complicated when uh, post-liberalization, the government uh, has a new belief that uh, it has to monetize on uh, or create industrialization in these less developed areas. Uh, one could be mining, encouraging mining of coal, bauxite for aluminum, and iron ore and uh, there could be uh, like you are building more dams to get more water for the cities now this uh, photograph is about uh, uh, kutia cones who are protesting uh, nalco uh, which is a, a state uh, public sector undertaking to uh, extract aluminium so they believe in the hills uh, being uh, their gods and they didn't want uh, any exploitation of the hill or the, their natural habitat for extraction of ore. Now, uh, they get caught in this uh, cross conflict. Uh, the security forces are provided with uh, two lakh worth of uh, uh, this uh, uh, shields or uh, body armor. Now, my response was that uh, uh, when I read a news article that uh, one of the tribal leaders uh, was uh, tortured in a police station and he died. So my response was that uh, a more satirical uh, way of saying that uh, while you protect your uh, security forces, uh, what happens to the vulnerable tribal? So I just uh, stitched those leaves together and made a uh, jacket, a bulletproof jacket, uh, trying to say that uh, 
for the tribals, uh, this is the only means by which they can protect themselves. So the uh, historically uh, Niamgiri uh, Andolan, as it is called, uh, was uh, successful because of international pressure. So uh, they were able to petition and external uh, people uh, got involved and uh, for a temporary five year period, I think uh, they are safe, but uh, we don't know how things will be in the future. So this was how uh, the uh, leaf jacket transpired to be. So I spoke about uh, mining uh, being one of the ways in which uh, lush green forest and mountain can suddenly be raised down to uh, a very shallow or uh, deep uh, gash in the earth uh, where nothing uh, exists or will ever grow just for the coal. And the coal becomes uh, a polluter. And India right now has almost 60% of its electricity generated from coal. And during the lockdown itself, uh, I think this is a decades old problem where the government uh, has to take care of the environment. It also wants to pursue development. So this, uh, if you have heard of uh, Dantewada or Dandakaranya, it is the most densest forest of India and the oldest forest uh, that you will have in India, even the Ramayana mentions of it. Now, during the lockdown, they announced that uh, these coal fields will be open for exploitation. So you will see the lot of conflict uh, around the Naxalism or the Maoism originates from displacement of uh, these tribals in these areas. So what people who were always dependent on the forest are now told that they have to abandon uh, their uh, uh, ancestral home and then just move aside for the corporations uh, or the government to take over and start mining. So it's not just about displacement, it's also about how it starts to affect the health of uh, the people who have always stayed uh, so rooted to uh, the region. Now they are dependent on the streams uh, which emanates from these hills uh, for their daily needs of water. And they also depend on the forest produce uh, of this area. So uh, the forest in this area can sustain the entire family for at least six months. So my uh, response was uh, remembering the story of uh, Bhashma Asura. So anybody in the audience who knows the story of Bhashma Asura? Anybody who can uh, narrate the story for the rest of us? Anybody? I'm sure some, some of you... Um... Anvesha said she can. So maybe Anvesha, you can unmute and share. Anvesha Dube said yes. Yes, sir. Anvesha, you... Yes. Uh, sir, am I audible? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, sir. So the story of Basma sir is uh, that uh, initially Basma sir was... Um, was trying to uh, get um, uh, he uh, worshipped and he उन्होंने बहुत तप किया कि उनको ये वरदान मिल जाए कि उनको मतलब कोई भी जो उनकी चॉइस का वर हो वो मिल जाए उनको then uh, then Shivji was pleased by uh, all his um, all his tap and sacrifice so he uh, gave him uh, this blessing that uh, the whatever thing he touches, uh, especially if he keeps hand on uh, someone's head, that thing will uh, get destroyed. So yeah, will turn, uh, uh, we'll turn to ash. Yes, sir. So uh, then he, uh, he uh, became so proud and then he tried to uh, destroy um, Lord Shiva him, uh, himself. So, uh, so to protect him, uh, 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 Lord Vishnu did this and uh, he changed in, uh, himself into a in, into an avatar of Apsara, and then he uh, he asked him to uh, copy the steps, uh, the dance steps. Uh, so Bhasma uh, he was attracted to that Apsara, uh, which was uh, actually Lord Vishnu, and then he copied all the dance steps 
and after that uh, he he destroyed himself as he was copying one of his uh, dance poses and he kept his hand on his head and destroyed himself and converted himself to ashes right thank you thank you so much so yes. uh, the one on the right uh, is a painting by raja ravi varma uh, of the same story now uh, i made my own interpretation i, I used uh, inspiration from the headgear of the tribals which they use uh, during rituals and my first iteration uh, was inspired by this uh, thermal power plant uh, coolant uh, which uh, i always saw uh, in my childhood on my uh, way to vishakhapatnam so i would always wonder what that giant structure was but never got an answer to it so looking through the data i felt that uh, uh we as individuals are solely responsible uh for uh this because we are the consumers we need more and more energy and that is what is causing this uh entire uh, destruction of uh, the environment so you want power for your air conditioners you want uh, now power to for to charge your uh, uh cars as well so our energy dependence uh is and uh, uh, causing us to turn into bhashma suras so i feel that uh, each one of us is nothing but a, a bhashma sura in himself and i added uh, charcoal uh, to the top to make it uh, a little more uh, demonic and uh, this uh, again I, I i would say i'm not much of an extrovert but uh, this forced me to uh, get into performance i didn't have anybody else to pose for me uh, with uh, any elaborate dressing but uh, uh, i wanted a modern interpretation so i used uh, myself as the model and uh, uh, adopted the same uh, try to uh, uh, start uh, dancing as well so it's a good story about how uh, I, you're forced to shed your inhibitions and uh, move ahead so this is again the story of uh, uh, kutia uh, sorry uh, jharnia cons uh, these are the people who stay maybe 50 kilometers away from where i grew up and i didn't know of them until uh, their movement uh, to fight against nalco uh, which was uh, 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 trying to uh, encroach on uh, one specific hill which was of very uh, very sacred for uh, uh, this community so these people inhabit a very small region in those hills but uh, they refused to move away they said that uh, their ancestral uh, uh, deity resides in those hills and they would not uh, budge from there so why uh, they are the protectors of the stream at their uh, their shawls you can see very clearly that the hills uh, are uh their uh, uh i mean the most dominant uh, symbol and they worship the sun and the stream uh, the uh, the uh, slanted lines are nothing but the streams so they fought uh, very uh, vociferously uh, against uh, uh, this uh, encroachment uh, by this uh, 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 private corporation so you can see uh, despite their protests the bauxite extraction continues to happen and that uh, hill that you see is the one uh, which is uh, uh, under contention so my response was uh, so one thing which you need to know about uh, bauxite uh, is that uh, it is uh, spongy so the red mud uh, can soak up a lot of water so whatever rain happens uh, during the monsoon it gets soaked up and this uh soil or uh, ore releases the water slowly uh, over the entire year so a tribal doesn't have to go anywhere else he the springs and the streams which flow from the hill so you can look at the scale of the hill uh, that hill provides for these uh, streams which are uh, which will last for the entire year so these tiny streams moving coming from all these mountains are what create the rivers now these rivers are the ones which we are all dependent on for our agriculture for our daily needs in the cities now what happens if you get rid of these mountains and 
uh, where will the water uh, come for, for us as well. So the tribals are the first casualty, but in the long term, the casualty will be us. So I uh, just created a pot out of it because I've always seen uh, uh, in towns and municipalities where uh, you will have people lining up with those plastic uh, pots and uh, having fights with them. So I created a frame and the frame twisted on its own. So the abstraction uh, was taken care of by the medium. So I was, uh, while I tried to create a perfect pot, uh, the pot always disobeyed me and it had its own uh, path and it took its own shape. And I really loved that part. So again, I continued uh, with posing uh, with me as the model. And uh, so the last piece is uh, uh, again, uh, uh, talking of uh, tribal rights. Uh, so we are taught in history books that uh, the first war of independence was uh, 1857 when the Mughals uh, along with other kings rebelled against the, uh, the British. But uh, what we don't know is that there was a Santal rebellion a decade earlier and uh, uh, lots of times the, the tribals have vociferously fought against uh, uh, this British and their uh, loss of trying to encroach on their forests and having to pay for taxes uh, to the British. So uh, there have been uh, uh, lots of acts passed uh, to uh, uh, protect the rights of these indigenous communities. And uh, for during independence uh, or before independence, there was a British anthropologist called uh, Vernier Irwin who very Irwin, and uh, he stayed with the Gonds in Madhya Pradesh and uh, post-independence, he had advised uh, Nehru that uh, they have their own independent structures and their own uh, social values and uh, the newly formed democratic government should not uh, interfere with their lives. So the uh, Nehru government uh, post-independence also advocated that unless the tribals want to be part of the mainstream society, they should be left on their own. But uh, having said that, uh, the all the large dams that were built post-independence, the public sector undertaking factories which were built, did cause a displacement. So uh, they have been fighting. So the birth of Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand as independent states is also dictated because they have significant tribal uh, population and their uh, culture or their uh, values are not appreciated by the rest of the people, uh, the states who they had been with for so long. So uh, there have been laws. Uh, one important law is the Forest Rights Act in 2006, uh, which gave uh, these uh, communities the right to their forest and no government can encroach on them unless villages in that uh, surrounding uh, agree to it. Uh, so it is the panchayat. So uh, subsequent governments, uh, they have been not implementing this law in practice uh, because uh, think of it like uh, you're asking someone who has stayed in the forest for centuries to now provide a document or an other card to prove that they are, <laughs> they are a tribal in that uh, forest, right? So it is a little complicated and that is what is the overall conflict. Uh, but the general approach of uh, governments has been that uh, uh, you can compensate uh, for whatever forest is uh, lost because of development. Uh, so recent laws like the Compensatory Forestation Act or uh, other things try to say that you can create a forest uh, by move, planting, doing a plantation elsewhere. Uh, which is uh, not really a forest, it's merely a plantation, it's a mono, monoculture, uh, which cannot sus really sustain any wildlife or any, uh, it, it is basically you're losing out on your uh, uh, biodiversity. So the one, photographs on the left is uh, a sacred group, which is still intact, uh, the mining has not encroached it. But the village has died. The village has been usurped and the villagers have been moved somewhere else, promising them that they will get concrete houses. So the concrete house is something on the right, which is basically uh, a structure with no windows. So you will have 
uh, the tribals painting uh, with leaves uh, the windows there so all of this made me uh, i started to remember the story of ekalavya ekalavya was uh, independent uh, self learned he could uh, live on his own and yet he was duped into uh, departing with his thumb for someone else benefit so this is the same story which continues where the indigenous communities have to are expected by the state to let go of their land and give it away to the government so that a corporation can come and benefit from it and we can call it uh, you have numbers like gdp and everything to uh, substantiate that uh, uh, it is development but you, there is considerable data uh, the Uh, there is research done which says very clearly that displacement and rehabilitation of tribals has not really benefited the tribals so from my own personal experience if i were to tell you that in the 20 years that i grew up there uh, the tribals did not really benefit from the factory that was set up there uh, it was just an excuse so i would say uh, this uh, prompted me to say uh, that uh, uh i took uh, the idea of uh, uh, the sacrifice of the thumb by ekalavya and uh, created this structure again uh, i didn't uh, imagine it would be so huge uh, but i ended up uh, as i started to build uh, i ended up uh, with a huge uh, structure and again uh, to make it stable i had to add a few layers more of uh, uh, broomsticks here and there Uh, but overall it was uh, uh, lightweight it was not very heavy and uh, then i laid the leaves uh, over it so i titled it as uh, ekalavya like likes your development uh, drawing inspiration from the facebook like symbol where the thumb is cut off and uh, does, that does does not have any more meaning uh, about liking so uh, what is it that i have really learned so this is a quote that i discovered uh, uh, when uh, looking taking art classes uh, during the pandemic as well so the pandemic uh, opened up this conversation where every museum and uh, uh, art gallery started to invite artists and they uh, gave talks so this is a quote about the real voyage of discovery consists uh, not in seeking new landscapes but in having new eyes so for me it was a revelation uh, this digging that i had done i had uh, uh, ventured off into 3d i had uh, enrolled into a course uh, to study folklore and uh, cultural heritage and uh, i discovered that uh, there is nothing different between man and animal all of us uh, are the same so and uh, animals themselves uh, at times are more empathetic than us uh, as some of these photographs demonstrate here so i would say the, this was a journey of discovery of my own self my own identity i um, I, i i am more of a migration migratory being uh, like my father was a migrant i am also migrant i have traveled all across india but uh, i i don't have that very strong identity but i have learned that uh, i have to be able to uh, understand that uh, india is not a monoculture it is a mix of cultures and indigenous communities uh, are probably the most uh, the first uh, adimanav or adivasi what we call are our progenitors or the people whose culture is influenced by nature we as people who have moved away from the forest may not see it in the same way but ideally if we are able to look at nature and celebrate nature in the same way as tribals do i think it uh, is something which will help us uh, 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 take up the future especially in the era of climate change so thank you for listening to me uh, and my journey uh this was uh, a coin so i was uh, uh looking for a coin to make an uh, uh, pendant for myself because tribals have this uh, way of creating jewelry out of uh, coins that they come across so i discovered that in 1985 the government was talking about uh, development through forestry so it is about uh, 
ensuring that you have uh, take good care of the forest and the forest will actually <clears throat> support these communities uh, in the future so thank you that is what i had to say any questions then i can respond to them wow ravi this was uh, really exciting uh, uh, i i don't come from a designing background and uh, i was thoroughly confused as to where is this conversation leading to but towards the end i was able to connect the dots in a beautiful way um and i think it was pretty uh, inspiring interesting to talk about discovery the depth of the research that you've done um i'll be very honest um, i expected your conversation to be more talking about technology your experience with air meet um, intuit you know all the companies that you've been associated with um and uh, you know uh, what you've shared is completely different and inspiring so uh, pretty pretty interesting work and i think um, uh, in in terms of setting the context for students and the approach to the work in terms of how do you discover design and how do you connect the dots i think this was really beautiful thank you So guys any questions from your side Okay so uh, I have a question sir Yeah Yeah tell me Um so um, as you have also pursued engineering uh, what difference do you find in work culture of engineering and designing sorry uh, your voice was breaking so can you repeat your question um ravi if you can hear me i'll just twist his question and ask you yeah am i audible yeah yeah so so how do you bridge gap between the learning and experiences from all of this that you've been doing to um, you know your technical work that you keep doing at airmeet and and, and uh, otherwise uh so how how do you bridge that gap yeah so uh, i would say engineering is more of the logical uh, uh, reasoning and uh, uh, being uh, uh, more uh, uh, about uh, uh, saying being practical so if you i were to build a bridge then i have to ensure that uh, it is stable and it can last a, a lifetime right so in the same vein uh, when we talk about uh, art it is more of uh, the empathy and uh, uh, expression right so um, uh, when i come back to design i think uh, a lot of it is uh, informed by the kind of explorations that you can do uh, which is not linear but tangential so uh, i would say that uh, more than jumping into a straight away into uh something you dig deeper into the why of it so that is about uh, the discovery of the problem and uh, you are not uh, uh happy unless you have figured out what is you are able to pinpoint what exactly is the problem and then you go about uh, ideating or solutioning for uh, what could resolve that problem so i think it's a mix of all of this so i would say encourage uh, students or designers or uh, rather engineers to be multidisciplinary so not being single track but people who can do a lot of stuff so if you like music you should be doing music and uh, uh, a lot of those can inform uh, your uh, design is what i would say Great. Um, others, anyone? Sir, I do have a question. Yeah. Uh, hi, I am Yug, uh, and I'm a communication design student. So uh, I just wanted to ask you that: Can you suggest some, um, maybe some practices or activities that we can, you know, uh, do it on a regular basis to improve our observation and on how we can extract the inspiration from nature? yeah so i think uh, the, there are lots of activities right so one is uh, street photography so 
about eight years back, I was uh, so deep into street photography that uh, uh, I would always be observing people. So it is again about uh, observing uh, how people live, how what uh, motivates them and all that. So the other could be like you are uh, uh, just uh, painting and sketching, right? So sketching is another exercise. I know a lot of friends who just go off over the weekend uh, to uh, some place and they just draw, right? So you are, uh, so when you are drawing, you are absorbing, you are observing and trying to replicate the same. And uh, again, uh, others could be of just collecting, right? So uh, I know people who uh, may go to the beach and they just collect the shells uh, that they come across uh, when they walk on the sand. Uh, so the, 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 the list is, uh, uh, li uh, limitless. So it is about you uh, being one with nature and it could be simply that uh, you are just listening to the birds. So I know people who go collect uh, samples of uh, sounds and that is a different hobby altogether. So uh, I would say whatever excites you, uh, that is the win uh, that you should follow. Uh, the thing that you uh, stay up till late in the night or wake up very early morning to be able to do that is something that you should always pursue that that answers my question thank you so much sir yeah uh, we have time for one last question or how, how how's the time how are we doing on time yeah sir i have a question sure, go ahead go ahead yeah, hello, sir. I'm Madhumita and I'm a communication design student. So um, throughout your presentation, there were a lot of structures made through leaves. So my question is, uh, leaves are a very unconventional material to work with. So what practical difficulties did you face while using them and how did you overcome them? So uh, I, I wouldn't say uh, they are uh, uh, not practically used. I think it, I showed you examples where, uh, so it is unconventional in the means. Uh, so there is a philosophical thought, right? So that you want to use just eco-friendly material. So even in your our practice, uh, so after that, I, did, I don't want to paint anymore uh, using any manufactured colors. Uh, so I would say, uh, the, I would say that uh, I was not, uh, keen on preserving uh, the art object. I was more keen on exploring what I can do with the constraint of just uh, a leaf. So the leaf that I showed you is a Siali leaf. It's a forest uh, plant and I, I was surprised uh, by studying its properties. Like it, it, it could stay green for two months. Okay. And if I were to uh, keep it indoors, it would stay that dark brown, like I showed it to you. I still have them in my room. Uh, they, they are in the same color. Nothing has happened to it. Okay. It continues to stay that way. And I, I could never imagine that the leaf can stay for so long. And it's very sturdy also. So as a, an experiment, what I did was I took that uh, uh, final artwork that I created and placed it in the open. So in the open sun, it turned uh, that uh, bright red. And uh, once it rained, uh, nat nature took over. So because of the weight of uh, the uh, uh, wet water, I think uh, over a period of time, it crumbled like uh, the one on the right. But it was a joy for me that uh, whatever I created, it is now going back to the earth and I, I have not affected anybody. So practical difficulties, uh, I, I think it is just like you would be working with wood or you would be working with metal, uh, you understand its properties and then you work with the, uh, that constraint. So if I take uh, the broomstick as an example, one end of the broom is very thin and very flexible. Other end is very rigid and it does not even bend. So when I am creating my frame, where I need a curve, I use the thinner side. And where I need rigidity, I use the thicker side. That's interesting, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so as we are near the end of this session, 
i would like to thank you sir uh, sir was me. sorry to interrupt uh, sorry okay. for the scene i think jagriti raised her hand can you please give her an opportunity to ask the last question yes sir yes sir definitely sir yeah hello sir so hello. i don't just a second i need yeah so hello sir uh, i don't have any question i just wanted to share something yeah. so i was in uh, bastar part of chatisgarh for more than 16 years and i have seen all the evolution of adivasis and how the hills are being depleted day by day so i did a research project on the same topic and i realized that the temperature of that place um, the place is known as baladela in chatisgarh so the temperature of that place is increasing by i'm sorry your uh, yeah you you hung up in between can please continue oh, okay am yeah, i audible yeah. now you are audible now jagriti yes, i recommend just uh, switch off the video so that there won't be any lag yeah go ahead okay uh so the temperature increased about 2% per year and it is because of the iron ore mining that uh, takes place there so um, even in the uh, in my portfolio i have many projects related to chatisgarh and when i share it with a uh, people so the other people who don't know about things uh, like the culture of chatisgarh they are very fascinated about it and i i have realized that these things are very, very precious and it needs to be preserved so me my mom and my dad sister we all are brainstorming like how we can preserve these things and we can showcase it to the world so maybe in the future i will be connecting with you regarding the same and will be um asking guidance from you sure. so you can always reach out to me yeah thank you sir thank you great so, atharva like... over to you okay thank you sir so um again as we are near the end of this session i would like to thank you sir for taking out the time in sharing your journey with us surely there is a lot we can learn from indigenous communities we wish you the best of luck for all your future endeavors thank you so much and wishing you all the very same <laughs> yeah